Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, Rocket Lab's Electron rocket suffered a failure in flight on its 13th launch. It was about 5 minutes 30 seconds into flight when telemetry, well, sorry, when video came out, but telemetry kept going. So the launch was named Pix or it didn't happen, and we literally lost the video feed before it made it into orbit, so it didn't happen. Now, the name was a reference to the primary payload. It was Canon Electronics CSAT-1B. It was an imaging satellite, and they're actually planning to launch many of these into space. And Canon are actually involved in the development of their own small launch vehicle called uh, Space One. It wasn't the only payload. There was also a number of smaller CubeSats from Planet Labs, uh, a number of Super Doves. Uh, if you know, the, the Doves are 3U CubeSats, which have like a 100 millimeter aperture camera that they use to image the Earth. And the Super refers to the new versions, which have many, many more uh, frequency bands that they can cover with their imaging sensors. All of these satellites were going to be launched into a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit over the poles. So the launch was going to be from Rocket Lab's facility from New Zealand and they'd actually brought it forward by one day to try and squeeze out a launch before the ex an extended patch of bad weather was going to ruin their day and keep them on the ground. Initially, the rocket looked like it was going fine. The first stage ascended on time. There was a decal that began to peel off just prior to staging, but I don't think anybody thinks that's relevant to the failure. Staging looked clean, uh, the second stage kicked in and that boosted the rocket over the next couple of minutes to a speed of 3.8 kilometers per second and that was when the video signal was lost. But the telemetry did continue. Now the telemetry showed no acceleration and the rocket slowed slightly for a number of seconds until the altitude stopped increasing. And then the altitude started decreasing and the velocity started increasing. It reached a peak altitude of 194.8 kilometers. And uh, the whole, we can tr probably trust this telemetry because the host very specifically mentions losing video, but the telemetry was still being delivered. So that's why I'm trusting these numbers. It, based on this, it pr fell back into the atmosphere. The vehicle traveled less than a thousand kilometers. It probably broke up in a fireball and you might say that's the rocket's red glare because it was the 4th of July, at least in the US time zone. So since that failure, there have been a couple of statements from Rocket Lab and from Peter Beck himself confirming the loss and apologizing to customers for losing those payloads. But there's been no extra clues, although the text of the statement curiously talks about a failure at four minutes in rather than 5 minutes and 40 seconds. So this is either revealing that things were going wrong before the 5 minutes or that they just made a mistake. Mission control audio didn't suggest that anything was wrong until after we saw things going wrong. So as of right now, we don't have a lot to go on, but let's talk about what we do know. So a refresher on Electron, it's a small rocket which masses about 10 tons when fully fueled with propellant. It's constructed from carbon fibre composite and it's propelled by the Rutherford engines, which are small electrically pumped engines burning RP-1 and liquid oxygen. And it's the only rocket flying right now that uses electrically pumped engines, partly because for small engines, the turbo pumps become less efficient and the electrical engines become easier. Um, so the first stage has nine of these small engines and a battery pack, which is able to deliver one megawatt of power for powering these things. The second stage only uses a single Rutherford engine with a large vacuum optimized nozzle and smaller battery pack. The second stage actually has three batteries and initially only two of the batteries power the engine. But as these get depleted, the engine does a hot swap, that's their own terminology, to switch in the third battery and drop the two dead batteries and then they literally get dropped off the rocket to reduce the mass of the second stage. And this is scheduled for six minutes and 20 seconds in to the flight, but that was about 40 seconds after we saw the failure. So looking closely at the video, there's a few things we can see, a few clues. Just before the video stops, 
It looks to me and many others like the red glow of the engine nozzle fades a bit. Now it's hard to be sure about this because the engine glow kind of moves around during the flight anyway, but if we take a loop and we bounce it back and forth, it is really obvious that this is sort of fading away. Now secondly, if you take the telemetry like I did and you plot a graph, to find the acceleration or the velocity versus time and you, that from that you can figure out the acceleration. For the seconds leading up towards the failure, the, the acceleration is more or less constant at around 1.3 G. But then it actually drops by about 20% for a couple of seconds before crashing down to zero. And maybe that's, you know, maybe that's a sign that something is progressively going wrong and then really going wrong. Uh, there also appears to be a change in the vehicle attitude just as the contact is lost. And this might be part of the flight plan, or it might be just normal random wobble that looks bad because the video cuts out. But it could also be a significant loss of attitude control. Uh, the mission control callouts suggest that the electrical power from the batteries is nominal, as I mean they're getting ready for the hot swap. There is some question actually about how the hot swap happens on the spacecraft, whether they literally just switch over from one bank to the other instantaneously, or if as the two batteries get depleted and are able to deliver less and less power, maybe it's the, the other battery gets swapped in partially to make up some of the shortfall. We don't really know enough about this system, but the more complex that is, the more likely it could be involved in some sort of uh, failure. So look, it looks to me like this is an engine failure. We get the reduced thrust and then we get no thrust. We get the nozzle cooling. And you know, then we have to ask why would the video feed drop but not the telemetry feed? I don't think this is a violent failure that blew away the camera or destroyed a tank or anything because if that were the case, I think you would see a bigger change to the, to the telemetry as pressurized you know, gas escapes. However, it is possible that the telemetry is coming down over a more omnidirectional antenna, whereas the video comes down on a more directional system. And that, those few seconds of data showing the rotation of the spacecraft might have just continued after that. And this might be an indication that the air, the spacecraft started spinning, lost attitude control, and was unable to send the video. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's that's totally possible. It, it's also possible that there's something happening with the electrical system. You know, if one of the batteries fell off, the you know, fell off the bus for some reason, maybe the second battery is trying to power the engine and it can't deliver all the power needed, so it's only delivering 80% thrust, and then because it's working too hard, it then fails. That's a possibility. Or... Maybe there's something to do with the hot swap changeover where the third battery gets changed in and then something goes wrong. Honestly, I don't think it's anything to do with the hot swap, but I'm prepared to be surprised because I always like to know more. And yeah, as of right now, Rocket Lab will have to work with the FAA to trace the cause of this and maybe we'll get some answers later. They did have another rocket practically ready to go, and I expect that flight will be delayed. It'll be grounded until they have a handle on what the problem might be for number lucky number 13. And, you know, I, I've said this before, rocket engineering is unforgiving. And one small problem with your vehicle, your chain, can kill your entire mission. So you need to make sure everything is working perfectly. Anyway, as soon as we find out more, I'll be sure to let you guys know. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.